Good day. This is the Amateur Hagiographer, and today we're going to talk about St. Rose Philippine Duquesne. Rose was born in 1769 in Grenoble, France, to a family of wealth and political connections. Her father, Pierre Francois Duquesne, was a lawyer, a businessman, and a prominent civic leader in his city, and her mother, Rose Pierrier, was a member of a leading family from the Dauphine region of France. From age eight, Rose had a desire to evangelize in the Americas, sparked by hearing a Jesuit missionary speak of his work there. She received a basic education at home from tutors and religious education from her mother. She was then educated from age 12 at the Convent of Visitation Nuns in Grenoble. She joined the Visitation Sisters in 1788 at age 19 without the permission or knowledge of her family, who were violently opposed to her choice, but finally gave in. Religious communities were outlawed during this period of the French Revolution, and Rose's convent was closed in 1792. She spent the next 10 years living as a laywoman again, but still managed to act like a good member of the order. She established a school for poor children, provided care for the sick, and hid priests from revolutionaries. When the terror ended, she reclaimed her convent and tried to reestablish it with a group of sisters she had maintained in Grenoble. However, most of the sisters were long gone, and in 1804, the remainder were incorporated into the Society of the Sacred Heart under St. Madeline Sophie Barat. They then reopened the convent of Saint Marie Dian Ho as the second house of the Sacred Heart nuns. Rose became a postulant for this order in December of 1804 and made her final vows in 1805. In 1815, Mother Duquesne was assigned to found a Sacred Heart convent in Paris. And in 1818, at age 49, she and four sisters were sent as missionaries to the Louisiana Territory in the New World to establish the Society's presence in America. Diseases contracted during the trip nearly killed her, and after she recovered in New Orleans, the trip up the Mississippi River nearly killed her again. She established her first mission at St. Charles, Missouri, a log cabin that was the first free school west of the Mississippi. She eventually had six other houses in America, which included schools and orphanages. She ran into some opposition as her teaching methods were based on French models and because her English was terrible. Her students, however, received a good education and her intentions were obviously for the best. She was ever concerned about the plight of Native Americans, and much of her work was devoted to educating them, caring for their sick, and working against alcohol abuse. Finally able to retire from her administrative duties when she was 71 years old, Mother Duquesne evangelized the Potawatomis and taught young girls of the tribe. This work only lasted a year, as she was unable to master the Potawatomi language and finally had to give up. She was known to them though as a woman who prays always. She spent her last 10 years in retirement in a tiny shack at the convent in St. Charles where she lived in austerity and constant prayer. She died in 1852 on the 18th of November in St. Charles, Missouri of natural causes. Pope Pius XI declared her venerable in 1935, under the decree of her heroic virtues, she was beatified in 1940 by Pope Pius XII, and then canonized in 1988 by Pope St. John Paul II. She has patronage of the Diocese of Springfield, Cape Girardeau, Missouri, and of people who have opposition from church authorities, but note this is not to do with theology. There's a lot of administrative thing goes on with church authorities, and this is in connection with people who have that sort of a problem. Her feast day is the 18th of November. For more about St. Rose and the other saints and Beatty of the Church, 
to other devotions and other people of the faith. Check the links below. Come see us at catholicsaints.info, catholicsaints.mobi. Thanks for listening.